hospitality grade 10. Uh, we are looking at the resource pack one and we are looking at lesson four. And the topic for lesson four is on milk and dairy products. And in this lesson, we're focusing on the dairy product cheese. Uh, the previous lesson, lesson three, focused on milk uh, itself and the different types of milk. So in lesson four, if you look at the first part, they explain to you exactly how cheese is produced. And if you look at the first point, they say cheese is produced by curdling milk. Right, so curdling milk means when milk is left out, right, when you have milk and you leave it outside, eventually it curdles, right, and it starts to become solid, right. It forms, separate, it forms into solid and liquid. So when cheese is produced, the curdled milk is uh, used and they separate the solid part of the milk from the liquid part, which is called whey. Right, and in order to speed up this process, because uh, milk takes a longer time to curdle, so in order to speed this curdling process up, they use an enzyme called rennet. Right, now rennet is obtained from the uh, lining of the stomach of cows and certain animals. But if you go to the supermarket to buy cheese, you'll also notice that some cheese on the label on the cheese, you'll notice on the ingredients label, they will say that this cheese product contains non-animal rennet. That means it's not gotten from a cow or any other animal. It's obtained from plants right, or fungus. Different fungi have, are used to also make rennet as well, the enzyme rennet. So they say it has non-animal rennet in it. And that's suitable for people who are vegetarian. Right, so it's, they use this enzyme called rennet, and then these curds are drained and they're processed, and they are cured or aged in a variety of ways for different types of cheese. So the different types of cheese that we have, which we'll see just now in the, as we move on into the lesson, uh, they are cured or aged in different ways. And cheese is made from a variety of different milks. So the most common is cow's milk. You also get different uh, types of goat's cheese, which is made from goat's milk, sheep, and buffalo. So if we move on, right, and they also say that it takes 11 liters of milk to make one kilogram of cheese. So that's how much of milk is used to make just one kg of cheese. So different types of cheese, if you look at your booklet or your resource pack, right, they look focus on five, the five most common types. So we have fresh cheese, semi-soft cheese, hard cheese, uh, hard grating cheeses, blue vein cheese, and the sixth one, which is processed cheese. So we're gonna look at each one and what they say about, uh, what the information that they give us on each one. Right, and I will try and get a document here that will show you pictures of the different types of, these, uh, these different types of cheese. Right, so, right, here we go. So we have different types of cheese. So the first one, fresh cheese. And then they give it this one to say, these are soft, moist cheeses and they have a mild taste. And there's examples. And these examples you see in every supermarket that you go, right? And you will see all these different types of cheese. So these fresh cheese, you have cream and cottage cheese, which come in a tub. A very popular one, feta cheese, right, which is used for different types of salads as well. Right, then goat cheese, uh, so you get something called ricotta. Right, these are white cheeses. Uh, mozzarella, which comes in the shape of a round ball. Right, and this is used as toppings for pizza. Right, so that's the different types or examples of fresh cheese. Right, and then we got semi soft cheese. Right, and you can see the most common one is Gouda, which is a very common cheese you see in your local supermarkets everywhere. Right, and they say this is more solid, right, but it's not as easy to grate. And there is a wax coating uh, around the cheese to prevent, to preserve the moisture and extend the shelf life. So shelf life meaning that it helps the cheese to last longer. Right, it extends its shelf life. 
So there's the wax coating, this red part is the wax coating. Right, so it extends the shelf life and it preserves or it saves the moisture in there as well. So the cheese doesn't dry out too quickly. So you have Gouda and you have Edom cheese as well, which is from uh, the Netherlands. Uh, hard cheeses, right, they say these are drier, have a drier texture and a firm consistency. So these are harder cheese, they're more drier, more solid, right? They slice very easily and they grate easily, as you can see in the picture here. Right, and the most common one is cheddar cheese, which you find in all our supermarkets. Uh, hard grating cheeses. So they say, yeah, these are grated or shaved, right, instead of being cut. So you use these cheese, you grate them very finely and you get this, like a sort of powdery form of cheese. And you can see an example here, which is Parmesan cheese. And Parmesan is used a lot in Italian cooking, especially uh, when they're making things like noodles, pasta, uh, pizza. Right, it's used as a topping, right? And they use a lot of Parmesan cheese, right? And it's a white cheese. Uh, and then you get blue vein cheese. Now blue vein cheese, and you can see the picture here, right? You can actually see the blue marks in the cheese, right? And you say this is a special mold that's injected into the cheese before it's ripened, right? And you get different types of these cheese where you get creamy ones, crumbly ones, right? And more drier ones. So they inject this mold, this blue mold into the cheese. Right? And that's how they get the name blue veined cheese. And there's different examples. You get Gorgonzola, right? Rocker Fort and Stilton. And the last one they spoke about was processed cheese. Right? And processed che cheese is made from one or more natural cheeses. Right? They are blended together with different emulsifiers and other ingredients or added ingredients, or preservatives. Right, so processed cheese is used is a cheese which lasts a longer time, right, than normal fresh cheeses. Right, so that's one advantage of processed cheese. Right, it's processed so that it's had all these added extra ingredients, added preservatives, right, to make it last longer. Right, and you can see the examples here. You have a cheese spread, right, flavored cheese spread. You have cheese slices, which is very common. They sell all over in all these supermarkets. Right. Uh, these cheese blocks, triangles, as you can see. Right. And these are used mostly, you'll bring them for school lunches or uh, very convenient snacks there. Right. But these are processed cheese. And so those are the different types of uh, cheese uh, that we have. Uh, if you go back to the document, Right, and you'll see the next part they talk about storing cheese, which is very important. Right, and they give you a few points here. They say, keep fresh, uh, keep fresh cheese cold and in their original packaging. So cheese has to be refrigerated, right, kept in your fridge. So as soon as you buy it, you have to put it in the fridge, right? And ideally, they can be kept in the original packaging. But if you look at the next point, they say, place in a clean paper towel in a covered container in the fridge. So once you open the cheese, put it in an airtight container, uh, place a paper towel at the bottom of the container and put the uh, cheese on top of it and seal it with a lid. Right. Uh, wipe off any mold with vinegar. So sometimes as the days go uh, by, you'll notice that sometimes cheese will start to mold. There'll be like white spots or bluish greenish spots that appear. And uh, the cheese is still good. It's just the surface that's starting to mold. So you can wipe that off, that little mold off with vinegar. And then they say, if you have different types of cheese, keep them in separate containers. So let's look at the activity. Five questions, very easy questions. Right, number one, define the term rennet. And so you have the term rennet there. Uh, rennet is explained here at the top. Right, rennet is an enzyme that is used in cheese production, right? And it helps to uh, produce cheese. So you can say uh, rennet is an enzyme, right? That's used to produce cheese, or is used to help produce cheese. Um, number two, describe how cheese is produced. So it's the same thing here, it's the first part. Cheese 
is produced by curdling milk and separating the milk solids from the liquid. Right, cheese is produced from curdling milk and separating the milk solids from the liquid. Right, and then the enzyme rennet is added. And then you continue by saying the resulting curds are drained, processed, cured or aged in a variety of ways. So the answer for number two will be the first three points together. All right, so let's look at number three. How many liters of milk are used to make one kilogram of cheese? All right, and that's the fourth point. It takes 11 liters of milk to make one kilogram of cheese. Uh, number four, give examples of semi-soft cheeses. So semi-soft cheeses are Gouda and Edam cheese, right, Edam cheese. Gouda and Edam cheese. And number five, discuss the guidelines for storing cheese. So you have these four points here, uh, which is keep the fresh cheese cold or refrigerated and in their original packaging, right, use an airtight container, Right, and place on a clean paper towel in the airtight container and seal the cheese in there. Uh, wipe off any mold with vinegar. Right, and keep different types of cheese in separate containers. Right, so that was just a reinforcement of the information that you had on cheese above. Right, so that was the activity. And uh, that will be the end of lesson four.